Welcome to Jazz Zone Together. Today, we are most pleased to be joined by one of the most highly regarded and successful music educators in the state of Florida, Eric Rivero. Eric currently serves as director of bands and the Jazz Institute at the Miami Art Studio Band Magnet School in Miami. Prior to joining the faculty of Miami Arts, he had highly successful band programs at a number of other schools in South Florida. Now I turn the mic over to Dick Dunscombe to conduct our interview with Eric. Dick, take it away. Thank you, Bob. Those are great words and they really are appropriate for this man. Good friend of mine and really one of the best guys in the field. Welcome, Eric, to Chad Zone Together. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here with you. We uh, are so thrilled to be able to talk to people that are in the field, that are active today, that are out there doing the thing. And boy, you sure fit all those qualifications and do it at a very high level. Before we get into what's happening with you today, uh, let's go back to when you were a young lad. What was it that led you to the career path to become a music educator? Well, my, uh, my parents were very, uh, they were firm believers in, uh, in all of us, me, my brothers and I, um, and my sister, to, to pursue music in some way or form. So they, they literally got us all lessons when we were younger, and sometimes it wasn't even professionals teaching us. It was, uh, like, for instance, my sister, my older sister, she was in high school at the time when I was starting. I was years old when I started uh, trumpet um, because, my, my, like I said, my parents wanted us to start young, and uh, one of the, the person that she helped me get lessons with was a student with her in school. His name was Lee Wickman. Uh, he was a trumpet player and uh, started me, but and he was very patient. God bless him. You know, uh, he's passed now, but um, he uh, was a great person. He was a great person and a great mentor. And I, I took with him for about three years, and then and then he passed me off to his teacher, which was Jack Pino at the time, and he taught me like the nuts and bolts of uh, why am I playing? You know, um, but. You know, so we start all at a young age. My brother Steve also, he plays trombone and he started uh, and he was two years old. I am, even though he likes to say he's younger than I am. But, um, and uh, I have uh, my brother uh, Mike, he played uh, the drums. My brother Frank, uh, he uh, played the viola and sang and he was also a football player. And then uh, my sister Elizabeth, she was a concert pianist and uh, got her music performance degree. and. And uh, she's now, um, uh, she teaches, uh, actually, she works at the uh, St. James Cathedral, teaching uh, in, and, uh, and working with the choirs there, as well as, uh, she's a music director, and she plays organ also. And I usually know, my brother is uh, the band director, Stoneman Douglas, and he uh, also is uh, the 13th Army uh, conductor for their band. So, um, you know, music runs in our family and uh, is very strong in our family, if you will. That's beautiful. That's really uh, a tribute to your mom and dad to see that you all were that involved and have been become that successful, which you surely have. Now, yeah. um, I know personally that you went to Florida International University and got your degree there. Give us a little bit of an idea about uh, some of the highlights of your time there. I got to say, I had an incredible, incredible mentor, you, um, while I was there. Uh, when I do, I, I got to play with the jazz band some. I got to work with the Wind Symphony, the Chamber Brass. Uh, I stayed with Arturo Sandoval. Um, you know, I stayed with also Jim Hacker um, while I was there. Um, I got a, a very uh, diverse experience that just focused in one genre or, or style. And I think that helped me become a, a very successful teacher. Um, it's helped me in many ways and teachings. And uh, I got to experience different uh, styles, um, not just of jazz, but in general, uh, whether it be world music or 
new avant-garde music with Orlando Jacinto Garcia, you know, at school, you know, and uh, other and other uh, professors. Um, felt, you know, very, very confident when I came out because I had a really good uh, pedagogy and during my time there and learning about different styles and uh, getting to be immersed with all these huge names, you know, and get to play with, you know, very famous uh, figures and, uh, and uh, be around them. So, you know, I applaud you because, you know, you're just an inspiration, truly. You've all these years, you've always, uh, you know, been at the forefront of everything, you know, Midwest or IEJE or, you know, all those different organizations that you've worked with over the years and, and help mentor and mold uh, quite, a, quite a number of directors. I got to say, I mean, I, I do a, a, quite a bit to you and uh, can't thank you enough for that. But, you know, my time at FIU was very dear. Uh, um, you know, and uh, during that time, I had a wife and a child, and you know, it was difficult. And I made it work, and I was very determined. You know, because my parents, the work ethic they had instilled in us was always very important. I remember the last four semesters where I was there, I was taking twenty-one credits each semester. You know, and when you got a whole bunch of one-credit classes, you know, I was doing that and working full time and gigging and doing lessons. Uh, you know, to whatever I could do to make ends at the time, but uh, it took a lot of catnaps, you know, here and there. So, but uh, but it was really, uh, you know, it was a time that I cherished because those uh, those those were that gave me the foundation uh, because I you know I used you know uh, earlier in my career I used your book quite a lot. You know, the the first one you did with Willie Hill that uh, the uh, jazz pedagogy one. And uh, and now later on, now this jazz zone uh, is you know, is a, is just a tremendous book. You know, I think uh, I really encourage directors. You know, I always tell them, you know, and especially interns, because I've I've interned, I've had uh, a good at least twenty eight interns so far. And uh, of the twenty interns, that's the first resources I teach them is, hey, you got to get these books because guess what they really, really do make a difference, you know, and they help you and, uh, and, and they're going to help you and your tremendously, you know, and help fill in the gaps. A lot of times that, you know, they miss stuff in their classes or the teachings that they've gotten. And this kind of helps fill those, those, uh, those gaps for them. Well, thank you for the um, great summary of uh, FIU. Indeed, it is a special place. And for your uh, commercial on me, uh, I'll <laughs> settle up with you later. <laughs> no, I, actually, Eric has been very, very closely tied to me and, and many other people in the Miami area. In my 11 years down there, I followed your career through the schools. Give, give the... the uh, listeners an idea of your progression of of your schools that you taught at sure i started uh my first school was american high school and uh which is a predominantly black school uh in the northern part of of uh, miami-dade county and a wonderful school because uh just a lot of traditions there so um i started that school and uh during that year, we were able to help turn around the program, which had some some setbacks before it. Um, and it was uh, we were able to do a lot there. And, and I made the teacher year of the year at the school um, for the school. And then uh, I was presented a job and presented a, an offer to come over to uh, Braddock School, which had you know a very uh, very good band program, a very large band program. And uh, they brought me into it, and I went over there, and uh, and I got to teach with my middle school. Actually, it was junior high band director, Myra Cobia. Uh, she was the teacher there, and I got to teach with her, which was interesting, having your former band director be your colleague then. Um, you know, and uh, my principal at the time, that time at, at Braddock, was my principal when I was in junior high also. And I thought, boy, if I had been a pain – would I be getting this job right? That's, you know, those are things, you know, you got to think about, you know? Um, so I taught at Braddock for four years 
And then uh, Victor Lopez approached me about, hey, I want you to come to Miami High School. And as all you all probably know, Victor Lopez was a uh, principal. Well, he was a band director years ago and then became a principal. And uh, he was principal for a while and assistant principal first. And then, uh, and then also besides that, he would always do composing and Warner Brothers and, you know, and later became Alfred. And I know he works some with Barnhouse also publishing. Um, so, uh, and then he, uh, he retired from the system as an administrator above, like in the district office. And he's still working at Nova. He doesn't know how to retire. He's still, and that in composing, you know. Um, but um, so he convinced me to come over uh, to work at Miami High School. And I worked there for I think two years, two years I was there. Um, had great, great kids and program. Uh, the community, the Latino community really embraced me. And uh, I learned best Cuban restaurants were also. <laughs> but uh, they were, uh, they, when I tell you, I mean, just, you know, the things I learned, you know, and, and I'm, I'm even, so it made me hyper aware of, of my roots, truly, to be there and to learn the history because it was during that year, the second year I was there, that was their 100th year anniversary. So that school. So, you know, um, so I was at my high school uh, for those two years. And then I got presented an offer to come over to Killian and be a co-director with Brian Wookie. And it was, the reason I decided to go ahead and leave was because my son at the time was in elementary school and it would allow me to see him double than what I was seeing currently because the school is so far. So I went to Killian. I had some great, great bands. Let me tell you, fantastic bands uh, that we would play every style of music when i tell you every style i'm not kidding with you um and we you know my my uh kids i teach them okay let's do autumn leaves they did all these okay let's let's go ahead and make it a salsa version of it and boom they would do it oh let's go ahead and do it as a bossa and we changed styles you know and they became very familiar with all the different styles and doing that um and then you know working on our you know trying to work on phrasing and and just, you know, our quotations, if you will, and, uh, and then expanding our vocabulary, our jazz vocabulary and stuff. Um, so after that, uh, the shows, I was like three years at, at Killian. And then I got offered the job because my colleague was left, left uh, Corf, and from the job magnet school, which is called the Mega Magnet Coral Reef High School. And I was there a year and had three wind symphonies, uh, three uh, concert groups that played college. My jazz band played college literature and then two combos and then the marching band I taught. Um, and I needed a change in my voice. So I, I went to Glades Middle School and I was there 12 years. And those were the, the absolute 12 best of my life. Um, during that time, I met my wife there um, and uh, you know, not as a student, right? <laughs> but but had uh, she was like at the school, and uh, she was two doors down. Who knew, who knew that? You know, and uh, while I was there, we uh, we uh, won various several national awards for jazz with a mark of excellence. Um, we also uh, got accepted to Midwest and performed there. I think it was nineteen uh, two thousand fifteen is when we performed at Midwest. Uh, with the uh, Glaze Middle School Concert Jazz Band. I had two pieces commit, and uh, some of my guest artists uh, were Tom Bones Malone, uh, Mike Warda from FIU. Tom Bones Malone, by the way, is the Blues Brother, and I mean, he has a whole list of things, but Saturday Night Live is on, uh, as well as the Tonight Show, CBS Orchestra. He has Tom Tom credits. Um, Dan Miller, that played with uh, Maynard Ferguson, and uh, you know, just a whole bunch of cats. And he was the trumpet player that uh, solo with my, my group. And, uh, you know, Mike Warder was a monster player, pianist. And uh, uh, he was at FIU as the um, jazz piano teacher. And uh, he ran that program pretty much uh, during the later part. Um, but unfortunately, he passed uh, not too long ago. But he uh, really, really, really 
a wonderful person. And then the last person was a uh, Latin Grammy winner, Dr. Ed Kaye played on my season. So he played the Midwest performance. Uh, that truly was uh, a memorable, memorable experience because those kids played so far on their years. They were playing charts, you know, Alan Baylock chart, uh, hullabaloo. That's extremely difficult. And they, played, you know, I tell you, they played it, they played it. We had a piece commissioned by uh, Victor Lopez uh, entitled Sabor de Cuba. And uh, that became on uh, Pepper's Ed uh, Editor's Awards, as well as another chart called One More Twice, uh, composed by Paul Baker. He did those, those two gentlemen did those uh, compositions for, for my groups and were very well received. Uh, and a lot of my colleagues play in today. So I was there for 12 years, and then uh, I was approached by the principal um, at uh, Miami Art Studio to come over and uh, and to really build something fantastic. And uh, this is my end of the fourth year there, and it's just incredible what's going on. I can't wait to tell you guys about it. Um, do you want me to go ahead and continue, or, want me to, or is that just oh. right now? No, man, you're doing a great job. You are bringing back yeah. nostalgia to me from from all those spots and the Cuban food and everything. Yeah, yeah. let's go on. Awesome. Let's go on. Tell us about the current position. So, my current position. Uh, when we when I got there, they had a, one superior plaque. And that was it. You know, it was for jazz, um, and that was it. So their program, they've had uh, it's. Uh, the school is like 20 years old, 18, 18 years old. And 12 years ago, they decided to make it a magnet. And when they made a magnet, it was first a middle school, by the way. It's important to know that. And they converted to a through 12 school. So um, they made all magnets. So you can't just go live across the street and come to the school. You have to make it into one of our nine. And we even have entertainment law. As one of our uh, magnets, we have orchestra, we have band, we have chorus, we have musical theater, both middle school and high school, theater tech, we have tech production. I mean, it's just incredible the things we have going on. So uh, they gave, um, during that time, these four years, we have three jazz bands, which is now looks like next year is going to be four jazz bands, uh, all sports superiors. Um, and uh, and then even at state uh, with the one because the other ones have middle school kids mixed in them, so we only took one of them to state and actually two 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 of the state sorry, and both got jazz uh, both Jasmine's got street superiors at district and state. Um, we're we're in the process now of sending off for different things for mark of excellence also. Um, our school um, we have three concert bands. And because our school, the principal takes money and sets it aside so they can be an eight period day. So we can take more electives than usual. Uh, some of my colleagues, you know, uh, Ryan Ellis, you know, uh, jazz pianist uh, and his wife, Cindy Ellis, both teach the, the choir at the school and do a fantastic job. We had like 33 make all state, you know, that kind of thing. So it's, it's just a very special place. And we just had a performing arts comp bill. Uh, two years ago, and it was $14.8 million they spent into it where we can actually control the acoustics in our hall. Um, so it's just a tremendous place. So in addition to the four jazz bands we're going to have next year, well, right now we have three jazz bands and we have a Latin band. Our Latin band, when I tell you, this is true, authentic Latin music, not, not uh, you know, sometimes you'll hear pieces and they, they're Latin equation and but they're very far down. This is everything the artists are playing. Mark Anthony, all these guys, you know, that you hear about. Um, we are, we're playing those pieces, no doubt. And uh, so they're just doing a fantastic job. We just finished uh, doing On Your Feet, the music we had. We got, we chosen to do the piloting for the nation. So we worked up that whole musical with all Gloria Stefan tunes. Um, the music, and, and honestly, it's not water. So it's very, very difficult music. I mean, double G's written in the trumpet, you know, and stuff like that. And, and my kids were playing note for note, everything. 
Um, so we did that and we did a performance of it about two months ago. And Gloria Stefan and her husband came and they were blown away and they were tweeting about the band and how fantastic they were. And on May 24th, we are going to be doing a project with Gloria Stefan. I, I can't, but it's going to be very exciting and everyone can be able to go ahead and see that on July 4th. So on July 4th, uh, there's going to be a national TV special. And my kids are going to be featured in that uh, with Gloria Stefan. So, wow. That's an exciting time at our school, you know. It's a very special place, that's for sure. And they are really fortunate to have you at the head of their program there. You know, um, well, thank you. through the years, you've received a lot of accolades and a long list of awards. What, what are some of those that are most important to you? Um, SBO, the School Band Orchestra uh, magazine, has uh, 50 directors that make a difference in the United States. And I was selected, um, felt very, very honored to represent Florida for that. Um, and uh, they wrote about my accomplishments and stuff. And, uh, and I thought, boy, I was, I was just, I was very, very flattered they chose that. Um, I've had the honor of directing the Allstate Jazz Band uh, for Florida. And uh, that was wonderful. I've done uh, uh, the Gulf Coast uh, Honor Band up in Mississippi. Um, that uh, I go ahead and uh, I've gotten to go ahead and direct them. Um, I've just had it's just numerous of things um, uh, that I've gotten to be a part of. Uh, also, you know the fact that taking a band Midwest, you know that, that is a huge, huge, huge thing because there's only two middle schools chosen that year for jazz band wise, and while mine was one of them, um, you know having pieces composed. You know, for me, uh, that you know, my friends that were nice enough to do that. Uh, it was a huge honor. Um, all of these things are, you know, uh, you know, and, and quite honestly, one of the biggest fl most flowering things in my career, honestly, was uh, having Gloria and Emilio Stefan uh, praise our kids and, and my performance with them. Um, and they were being very sincere when they said that. And the fact that they took time to go ahead and tweet about it after and and post different things about the band, and I was blown away. I mean, that, that's an honor in itself, really. Um, and to be acknowledged, you know, my kids, they, they get uh, wonderful, wonderful experiences because they just, they, they love what they do. They know I love what I do, truly. That's fantastic. Really, really fantastic. Now, both you and yeah. I have been, go ahead. I forgot to say, but you know the uh, the other thing was of the uh, the Mark of Excellence awards, those national awards, and uh, you know I've also won Teacher of the Year several times. You know those those are to me are very important things. But quite honestly, the the thing that makes more of an impact, I'm being honest with with me and thinking about those things, achievements, uh, stuff that my kids did. The last thing I forgot to tell you about was the uh, we earlier this year we got to perform in Tampa at the Strass Center because our our musical the On Your Feet was chosen to be performed on the main stage during their Thespian convention. So we played in front of four thousand people. We got to perform, and my kids, I'm telling you, that was like you should have seen their faces. That was just you know something a memorable moment they'll never forget. Uh, and, you know, just performing and, and loving what they do and, and truly, uh, you know, aspiring to be the best that they can. I, I admire all my kids tremendously. Eric, I think it's important that I point out, as you've been speaking, your, your uh, remembrance of awards and recognitions all have to do with the kids. And that's really the theme of success in your career. and those that follow you. Um, so congratulations, my friend. You, Thank you, Robert. You and I are, are both uh, attendees at a lot of music organization conferences, festivals and, and uh, organizations. How important is it to participate in, in that, those activities? 
I, I find is extremely important, not just to participate, but to be an active participant, meaning to try and help and make a difference. You know, one of the things that um, I'm very proud of is that through the Florida Bandmasters Association, I was their jazz chairman uh, for three and a half years. And during that time, we helped, you know, numerous projects to help kids and to help directors. Because if you embrace your association and you're there to make a difference, you truly do make a difference in their lives. You know, so I try to instill in, in the association, make them, uh, got them to go ahead and offer clinics as part of the music performance assessments, which is extremely important. Um, we went over copyright law in a sense to make sure that, you know, composers are getting their dues, you know, uh, and that and that people are doing things ethically, um, you know, um, making sure that they had a music list to help guide them. Not necessarily that they had to play something off, but to give them suggestions of great composers or significant composers and arrangers uh, that pieces that are, 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 are distinguished, if you will, uh, and trying to help them so they uh, uh, know what jazz standards are and the Great American Songbook and all those things, you know, uh, learning about those things. And I've given numerous classes on, uh, on professional developments, whether it be at the state level uh, or national level. Um, I've done that, you know, to help to help people because, you know, I feel that there's a void sometimes and that people haven't learned uh, along the way, or perhaps they don't have a necessarily have a jazz background, which is quite often the case with some of the directors. So um, I feel it's, you know, my duty to try and help them, you know, so however I can help them, whether it's suggesting, you know, books to help them or resources uh, is very important. So I served as the, the Florida Bandmasters Association chairman uh, for jazz uh, for those three and a half years. And then I just completed my term now uh, for the national board. I was a national band association. I was their jazz person for the last five years. We ran a jazz uh, contest each year, composition contest, uh, which would feature uh, kids from all over singing compositions. And, you know, and, uh, and we would choose the best composition, whichever composition was selected was performed at Midwest uh, by whatever the service band, whether it be the Commodores, the Amaran of Note, whatever service band was playing that year, they would perform that composition. Uh, and also they would receive a cash award. That's the other thing. So, you know, it was, you know, those projects are, are very meaningful and that's going to help, you know, some of our younger composers come shine because there's a lot of talented cats out there. And uh, they need to get their names out and, and, and their pieces out. So then people can say, wow, that's great. You know, and, and people can get inspired by that. Now, you've been really busy judging the state yes. and national events all over, over the past several months, I know. What, what are some of the consistent problems that you run into in the jazz area? And uh, how can the directors address those? So in the jazz area, I, I just feel that a lot of the times literature selection is one of the biggest problems some of the directors have, that they're not sure what to pick or they're not sure how to pick it. And you have to make sure you're working to your strengths. I really... I firmly believe in having a very diverse program as far as musically, you know, my kids just played on the radio last night for an hour and WDNA radio station in 88.9 in Miami. And during that hour, we played uh, at least 13 different styles of jazz in that hour, you know, and, and that's important because again, it shows depth in your program. It shows diversity. It shows that you're bringing different cultures to your kids, you know, um, and different styles. So I think that's really important. Um, so that's one of the problems I, I see around the state as far as, you know, some people picking, you know, stuff that it's nice for a concert, but not necessarily appropriate for 
a music performance assessment. Then uh, in regards to improvisation, you know, they're not sure how to tackle it and, and how to go about it. And there's different ways of, of, of cultivating that, um, you know, most people know a blue scale, but a blue scale doesn't give you everything and, and you can't you work in every situation. And some people think it kind of does, it doesn't. And it's important to learn how to go out and teach improvisation. And if it's just starting at first or the class, you're teaching them how to read the chords and you're telling them, okay, we're just going to go ahead and play root third, root third, root third, root third for this, these chords and make sure we're changing together and they work on that. And then we said, we go, okay, now we're going to go root third, fifth, third, root third, fifth, third, root third, fifth, until the next chord and so forth. And then root third, fifth, seventh, you know, and they start learning to outline the chords. That's a great technique. And then you tell them, okay, now we did the root third and that worked great. Now you can go ahead and play whatever rhythmic pattern you want but you're only allowed to use root third. And once they establish that and they feel strong on that basis, that's when you can start expanding, you know, and the more they do that and they start developing their ear, that's, that's crucial. That is crucial in their development, learning the mode scales, you know, and, and making sure that you're applying them properly taking examples and say, okay, you heard Miles Davis. Okay. And this tune, he uses a Dorian mode. You hear how it sounds and hear, and now let's try the Dorian mode together. You know, those kind of things are really, really thing and are important. Building a vocabulary, they start learning a lick and then they learn that lick and they start transposing it to different keys and learning that same lick in different keys and then trying to start using it as a quote in your piece. Just like we have quotes in literature, we have quotes in music. So you can start, you know, doing those things, and you're going to find by building your vocabulary, um, by working on again, trying to get those books to help guide you. You know, one of the things I remember, I'll never forget, is uh, in that in your first book series with Willie Hill, that pedagogy. I remember that you even gave a listing specifically of the people that were significant on each instrument, especially, you know, and I thought to myself, wow, that's really profound. That's really great. You know, because why? Because then they know who they can listen to that's significant at the time. And then they start getting ideas. This is what it's supposed to sound like. This is what a person that's mastery on the instrument is doing, you know? Um, but, you know, again, this is where the jazz zone, for instance, you know, looking at those resources and, and knowing what they have and utilizing them, it's, it's a great help. You know, I, I know even you have on your website where it's lessons and stuff with jazz, you know, um, just the other day I was looking through the internet and I saw uh, as part of jazz appreciation month, uh, preservation hell had some lesson plans on jazz and they were really good. You know, stuff that you could work with the kids, listening examples, you know, different things that you could do with your, your kids, no matter what level they're at, you know. Um, but those are some of the things I think that we could, as, as a state and as a nation, that we can improve upon in general. You know, um, I would love to see a jazz band in every school. I would love to see that, you know. And I know there's a lot of schools that's not happening because, just the directors don't know how to put it together. And that's why I, I always take time when I can to go ahead and present at conferences because I want to inspire them to say, hey, I want to do a jazz band. I want to have my kids have that opportunity. And, you know, some of my bands, they're on the bigger side. You know, my top band is not. It's like 20 in my top jazz band. But the other two bands they're close to 30. And you say, wow, that's huge for a jazz band. That's because I have so many kids in my school that want to do jazz and I don't want to turn away. I have more kids, and honestly, and that's why we're going to be doing a fourth jazz band. But my top jazz band right now is what's called the Jazz Institute. And that top jazz band, for a magnet school, usually they have two classes if it's an eight period day. They have two classes of jazz, or two classes, sorry, of contraband. And then they'll take elective if they have, to have if they if they have elective if they're a sixth grade day, 
then their two band classes, that's it. That's all they take. My school, because it's an eight period day, we can go ahead and take a jazz class in addition to that because we have an eight period day and they still have an elective on top of that. So where they're able to do jazz theory, they're able to do, you know, harmonies, they're able to do uh, um, even regular theory or AP theory, uh, vocal class. We have a studio engineering class because we have a full music studio on our campus um, that, you know, was donated. We got that donated by the Jose Milton Foundation. Um, it's a $250,000 studio, not the structure, just the stuff inside it. Um, so what we, we have some really exciting things going on. But I would tell you that's why I feel it. They, if we could improve upon the improvisation, if we can, you know, and not just guessing notes and not just saying a blue scale for everything, those things are going to really pay off. Knowing what jazz standards are, if even if you don't know, if you've never and not sure, type in and Google Great American Songbook, and you'll see list come up where it tells what what the Great American Songbook is, and those are the standards. So you start picking tunes off of there. And that's a great resource to start with, you know, on Wikipedia. That's where I saw it last, you know. So I, I really encourage people to do that. But those things, if we can try and tackle those things, uh, I think. And then also bringing people into your room. You know, I've, I've had you come in. I've had uh, uh, J.B. Scott. I've had uh, Ryan Chapman, Ed Kaye. I've had... Roberto Torres, the famous singer, he came the other day, we concert, he came in. Um, Shelly Berg, I've had all these greats come in my room and they've worked with my kids, you know. Invite somebody to come play in your concert. Say, hey, can you come and work with my kids? You know, those things are going to prove priceless because those people are going to give them insight that's going to help, you know, not, not to be scared because some people are scared to bring people in. You've got to help. You've got to get help if you're not sure what to do, you know, whether it be, you know, tutorials, whether it be uh, a book, whether it be having people come in. Those are all great things you got to try. And you're going to see by bringing them in, it's going to strengthen your program. It's going to strengthen you as a director because you're going to learn things every time you bring someone in. Okay. And then the last thing I tell you that as far as we need to try and work on is Getting people not to say ta 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 when they're playing, because the ta 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 thing, it just all it does is, it it, it just it'll never swing like that, and they have to learn the syllables and make sure they know what syllables go with the accents, and making sure they know that when they're swinging, they just gotta say do da do da do da do da do, emphasis on the upbeat, not stopping the air, practicing detonguing. Those things are great, and that's what's going to help your style a lot. Because the things I hear people doing sometimes are ta 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 ta, and that doesn't swing. It sounds very choppy, and just it doesn't work. So there is a difference. It's not died a sixteenth with two eighth notes. It should be definitely it's a quarter note eighth note, and it's supposed to have a triplet on top of it. And you got to feel that do da do da do da do, and you feel triplet subdivision. And the more they think of that when they're swinging, then the swing is going to come to life. But if they don't, there's problems. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard the Bible. This is the kind of information that everybody needs to understand and share. Eric, thank you so much for your uh, message that you've imparted today. And and my friend, thank you also for all the wonderful times we've had together. And I look forward to seeing you on the big stages around the country very soon. Thank you so much, buddy. Appreciate it. And, and again, I cannot tell you what a truly an honor it was to be interviewed by you. And, uh, and again, if they don't know what a tremendous resource you are, they need to really start investigating more because you know what? You have always been at the forefront leading the way for jazz educators and kids. And you know what? I, I applaud you, my friend. You've had such a distinguished career. And again, I value your friendship beyond belief. Eric, thank you so much for being a part of this. Uh, it's obvious why your programs are so successful because you care about 
what you're imparting to the kids. And the way you just did a mini clinic here on uh, how to improve a person's jazz program, I hope all of our viewers will take that uh, very, very seriously. Thank you. And thanks for giving an important day to us today. No problem. To our viewers, thanks for joining us for this Jazz Zone interview. Please check out the entire library of interviews. We know you'll find them all of real value to your program. Watch for updates as we're adding new interviews regularly.